So what problem does Ansible solve for us? So we've already explained briefly what Ansible is and kind of had an idea of, of, the, of, the, of the problems that it solves, but there are more serious problems that it actually addresses more directly. And the first of those is human error, right? So Ansible will greatly diminish the amount of human error that you have in managing your servers and managing your estate. Robots, computers are much better at doing tasks, re repeated tasks that need to be done the same way over and over. They're much better at doing that than humans are. Humans get tired, humans make mistakes, they type things wrong, they get distracted. Ansible also, solves the problem of transparency. That's because when you execute Ansible code or when you manage your estate with Ansible code, people can see the changes that you're making in that code and they can see when the Ansible is executed by your continuous integration or your continuous delivery stack. They can see those changes automatically. But if you log on to a server and make a change manually, no one knows that you've done that, right? Unless you tell people you could make a change and pull the rug from under someone who's also making changes on the same server. So Ansible introduces transparency to your entire configuration model. Also repeatability. As we'll see when we look at the when we look at an example problem and the example solution, repeating the same tasks over and over is actually very, very time consuming. So Ansible code can just be run over and over and over. You can just keep going over and over and over as many times as you want, whereas manual tasks are very hard to repeat in a short period of time. You've also got documentation. So your Ansible code acts as documentation for your entire estate. So that documentation, anyone can come and read the code and they have documentation and they can understand how your Linux servers are being configured, how your Windows servers are being configured. They can see exactly what the state of those servers is or at least should be by looking at your code. So your code acts as your documentation and portability as well. Okay, so the Ansible code can be moved between projects, it can be moved between companies, it can be shared. If you've got a playbook that does something on some Linux system for you, it's gonna work for someone else too. So if you create a lot of Ansible that manages a huge network for you, and then the company says, we, hey, we wanna do another project over here. How much of that Ansible code can we just use in order to get the project spun up very quickly? And the answer is probably most of it. So it's very portable between projects and organizations. And we touched on it lightly as well, but time, Ansible will save you a lot of time. So there's an upward kind of upfront investment of your time in learning Ansible and writing the code, but the amount of time you get back in the long term is exponential, it's, it's huge. Uh, Ansible will go on to save you a lot of time. So when we start looking at our example problem and our example solution, you will see after we finish this course just how much time and effort Ansible will save you.